Far too often, presentations of financial results and analysis contain way too many spreadsheets. Tables and tables of numbers that get put on the slide. And you know, it makes the presentation not as effective as it could be for a couple of reasons. First of all, when we put a huge table of numbers up on the slide, what we're doing is we're asking the audience to figure it out, to do the analysis, to do the math. You know, my experience says if you ask the audience to do math, they won't. And if you ask them to figure it out, chances are they'll come to a different conclusion than you wanted them to. Uh, how easy is it to change their mind once they've come to a conclusion? Yeah, not very easy at all, is it? Well, the second reason that it's a problem is, is we got so much up there, and, and you've seen this happen in meetings too often, where an executive typically finds some number in the lower corner of that table that has nothing to do with the message we're talking about. But they grab on, they go dog on a bone on that message. 15 minutes later, we are off somewhere we had no business being. But you know, as presenters, we invited that. Because we put it all up there for them to get going on it. Well, I uh, have authored nine books on the topic of effective PowerPoint presentations and, and presentations of data. I'm one of 15 people in North America recognized by Microsoft with the Most Valuable Professional Award for my contributions to the Excel and PowerPoint communities. I've been doing this on my own for almost 20 years, and in that time, I have seen tens of thousands of slides and thousands of presenters I've spoken to. And I ask them, why do you keep putting spreadsheets on the slide? And the number one answer is, well, Dave, we've always done it that way. I do it that way because the person in the job before me did it that way, my colleagues do it that way, my boss does it that way. Dave, we've always done it that way. Well, I probe a little deeper. And when I probe a little deeper, what I find out is typically there are three reasons that people tell me they put spreadsheets on slides. The first is they say, well, Dave, I have to show all the numbers on the slide because I have to be transparent. Transparency is a big value these days. We stenciled it on the entrance of the building. We've got to be transparent. We've got to show all the numbers. Well, I think we have to provide all the numbers, but I don't think they have to go on a slide. We'll talk about that in, in a little more detail in a moment. Uh, second reason I typically hear is, well, Dave, um, you know, not everybody can attend the presentation. So I have to put everything in the presentation because some people are going to pick it up off the shared drive or SharePoint and, and read it, and, and it has to have everything there as if I was there. So it serves a dual purpose, presentation and document. Those are two different communication vehicles. If all you're going to do is to take a document and project it on the screen, that does not mean it's a presentation. The third reason, and this is the one I really have to kind of probe a little more, and people are reluctant to tell me this one, but that this is the key one. Dave, it's so darn easy. I just highlight the cells, copy, paste onto the slide, I'm done. We're all working, what, two, two and a half jobs these days? We've got way too much to do. If I can cut down the time it takes me to create the presentation by simply copy, paste, I'm done. I'll do that. What I want to suggest today is that we change this fundamental underlying approach that we use. And instead of, well, we've always done it that way, we move to making a deliberate decision, a deliberate decision about everything in our presentation, but specifically here, a decision to say we are going to communicate visually. We're going to use visuals to communicate instead of spreadsheets. And when I say that, immediately I get two pushbacks. The first is, but, but, but Dave, I've got to give them all the numbers. How am I going to do that if I just use a visual? Remember I said you have to provide all the numbers? Why not put all those details in maybe a pre-read? Or links to supplement, supplemental files on a shared drive somewhere? Maybe backup hidden slides that you access if and only if somebody asks. There are many different ways to provide details to the audience without putting them up on the screen. The second pushback I always get is, uh, but Dave, I'm a finance professional. I'm not a designer. How would I know what visuals to use? Well, a little bit more about my background. My undergraduate degree is in chemical engineering. 
and I have an MBA. Notice one thing there, zero design background. I am a business professional just like you. And so I've had to figure out how do we select and create visuals that will effectively communicate messages around data. And I believe where it starts is with the message. The approach I want to talk about is selecting a visual based on the message you want to communicate. Now that's different than what you're going to read in some of these data viz websites or, or other publications that say, well, select it based on the data or the relationship of the data. Now I think that's important for analysis, but when you're communicating, I believe it comes down to the message. And I believe we can get really clear on our message by doing one thing, writing a headline for every slide. A headline like a newspaper does. And it doesn't matter, by the way, if you get your newspaper in printed form or online, every one of them writes a headline that summarizes that story so the reader knows do they want to dive into that story in more detail or not. If you write a headline for every single one of your slides, you will know exactly what message you are communicating. And there are times when you're gonna discover, you know what? I don't really know what the message is from this. That's a clue maybe that shouldn't be in your presentation. In my experience, what I've discovered is that there are six categories of messages that commonly are found in financial presentations. And so I'm gonna share those six with you and then we're gonna go through and look at each one of them in detail. So the first category are trends. Trends are where the message is about the fluctuation over time, not the individual values. So it is about the movement of the values over time. The second, the second category is where we're comparing to a standard. So there's a standard that we are being measured against, and how did we do against that? The third, we're comparing values to each other. Now here's where the actual values matter. It's how does the value compare to the other value? The fourth, how do the segments contribute to some sort of a total or a difference between a beginning and an ending point? The fifth one, rank. Here, the important message is what are the largest, biggest values down to the smallest values? So there is a, dif there is a distinct reason that we rank them because the message is talking about, typically it's the largest ones. It's typically what the message is about. And the final category is a portion of the total. Here's where we're talking about the important message is how big is this compared to some total amount or value. 